uh, update from the County of Hawaii regarding the South Kohala Waimea brush fire. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to uh, let everyone on this uh, update know that no acreage will be provided aside from the 40,000 plus acres uh, because flyby conditions right now uh, are, are unsafe. So until we have the opportunity to fly by and really get a good um, aerial view of the, the acres uh, burned, we're not going to be able to provide that information. Again, at this time, 7 o'clock p.m., uh, only two structures have been reported and confirmed, or two, ho two homes have been reported and confirmed to be in inundated. Uh, if you folks out there uh, you have family or friends that have lost uh, structure or have had damage to property, please go ahead and go to the hawaiicounty.gov slash civil hyphen defense. On there, you'll be able to fill out a public uh, declaration survey uh, letting us know that there has been damage. Uh, and if so, uh, please, and if, and if that is you, please make sure you go ahead and also call your insurance to make that claim right away. Uh, my name is Kazuo Todd. The Hawaii Fire Department Fire Chief. Uh, at first light, we'll be sending our chopper up to do a perimeter of the fire to get a total acreage of the current burned area. Uh, we have several active fires at this time across the west of the Highway 190, uh, fingers that have uh, broached over the highway, and we currently have crews working to contain those uh, to prevent them from reaching into the Waikoloa region. However, um, based on the prevailing wind uh, and weather patterns for the evening, uh, we are looking at lifting the mandatory evacuation for all three communities at this point. However, um, this will be reevaluated in the morning as we expect wind conditions tomorrow to again uh, go up. Our current wind forecast is showing uh, wind patterns between 18 to 28 miles per hour with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. And so while throughout the evening our crews will be working to build fire breaks with dozers and backburns, uh, this temporary uh, lift on the mandatory evacuation uh, may have to be reinforced later on due to prevailing weather patterns. Additionally, road closures will still be remaining in effect, so the community of Waikiki Ranch will not have access to the ranch as uh, the roads are still closed because of active fires in the area. Additionally, people who do choose to return home, please be aware weather conditions will have a lot of smoke uh, in the area. So families that uh, can find other accommodations or relatives or other places to stay are recommended to do so. At this time, uh, conditions within the communities are likely to be uh, a little bit smoky and, and potentially those with health issues and others are, are suggested to find someplace else to stay for the evening. Uh, again, the mandatory evacuation is lifted for the evening but will be reevaluated in the morning as weather conditions uh, will change again. Uh, that is our current update at this time. Mahalo Chief Todd for that update. Uh, from the administration, we would like to mahalo everyone out there who has played a role in keeping our community safe, from community volunteers uh, out there helping folks move all of their ukana and belongings, uh, <clears throat> to uh, the volunteer firefighters, to the Division of Forestry and Wildlife, to PTA, uh, to the military, the National Guard, uh, Army, Pohaku Loa, you know, there's a lot of hands playing a role in tonight's evacuations, uh, today's evacuations, in fighting this fire. You know, this is the largest fire that we've had here in Hawaii County uh, as a brush fire. And we want to make sure that, that everyone out there understands that this is a full-fledged effort. Uh, we've had a mobilization uh, like no other. Every single uh, resource on this island is being utilized uh, and mobilized to help fight this fire. At this time... Uh, we would like folks to feel safe but not forget that this is an emergency. It is not changing from an emergency at this time. All that, <clears throat> cause all that Chief Todd is saying is that right now homes are not in danger. That's as of right now. That doesn't mean that they couldn't be in danger later this evening or early tomorrow morning or even later this week. So be on high alert. Pay attention to our, our updates. They're being posted regularly. We're on the radio. We're on the Nixle app. <clears throat> There's a lot of people reposting and sharing our information. It's greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you who helps share factual and correct information is helping everybody to know exactly where to go and what to do during this time of an emergency. Hawaii Island has the best community on the planet, and we are very, very grateful as an administration 
to work with each and every one of you from each community to keep each other safe. And even if you're not on the west side, we have a lot of folks on the east side that are looking to provide uh, donations, that are looking to house and shelter our families in Ohana on the west side. So please reach out to everyone you know. People are willing to help. They're mobilized, and they're just waiting for your call. Again, please tune in for the rest of the evening. Uh, pay attention. We will be providing updates accordingly. Until then, uh, we'll see you soon. Aloha. Kilauea volcano continues to erupt at its summit, with multiple vents along the crater floor and western wall, feeding into an active lava lake. As of Sunday morning, all lava activity is confined to the summit caldera within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reports seismicity and volcanic gas emission rates remain elevated. The amount of sulfur dioxide was higher than the previous day and was measured at approximately 14,750 tons per day. These time-lapse videos recorded by USGS webcams capture the ongoing activity in the crater. Over the past 24 hours, the lava lake level has risen over 1 meter or more than 3 feet. This image, posted to the HEO website, provides a good look at the changes to the lake since the new eruption began on September 29th. In total, the molten surface has risen approximately 27 meters or 89 feet since the start of the event. Geologists say the west vent continues to be the most vigorous source, with sustained lava fountain heights of 10 to 15 meters or 33 to 49 feet. A comb is being built around it. Other vents continue to be active, including a 35-meter or 115-foot-long fissure in the central and southern parts of the lava lake. On the surface, localized crustal foundering continues, and scientists say that due to the location of the vents, the lava lake is not level. The west end is 3 to 6 feet higher than the east end. HEO notes that no unusual activity has been observed in the volcano's east rift zone. Scientists say they will continue to closely monitor Kilauea and provide daily updates on changing conditions. The new eruption of Kilauea volcano on Hawaii Island continues and the reactivated lava lake in the summit crater is slowly rising. All activity remains confined to the summit within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Scientists with the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory are tracking the activity and took to the sky on Thursday for a bird's eye view of the eruption. As of Friday, lava continues to erupt from multiple locations on the base and west wall of the summit crater, though the number of active vents has decreased over the past day. Overnight, field crews reported maximum fountain heights of 15 meters or 49 feet at the dominant vent on the west wall. Scientists say that at the start of the eruption, fountains reached heights equal to a five-story building. The lava lake is rising, but the rate has slowed since the early phase of the eruption. Over the past 24 hours, the lake has risen approximately 4 meters or 4.4 yards. Since the start of the eruption, the lava lake surface has risen approximately 24 meters or 26 yards in total. Sulfur dioxide emission rates remain high and on Thursday were estimated at around 20,000 tons per day. This is significantly lower than the initial emission rates of 85,000 tons per day that were measured just after the eruption started on Wednesday afternoon. The increase in gas emissions prompted a new message from the Hawaii Department of Health letting residents and visitors know that poor air quality may cause problems with respiratory health, especially in sensitive individuals. The USGS says seismicity is stable with few earthquakes and ongoing eruptive tremor. Summit tilt meters continue to record slowing deflationary tilt. At this time, there is no threat of lava inundation to nearby towns or neighborhoods. Scientists say no unusual activity has been noted in the East Rift Zone. For now, the Kilauea Volcano Alert level remains at warning and the aviation color code remains at red. There's been a change in the alert level for Kilauea Volcano as the eruption that began on September 29th continues. 
The USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is lowering the alert level from warning to watch and the aviation color code from red to orange, reflecting the less hazardous nature of the ongoing eruption. All activity remains confined to the summit caldera within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Early in the eruption, vigorous lava founding, with bursts reaching as high as 60 meters or nearly 200 feet, produced significant amounts of volcanic debris that was blown downwind. The lava fountains reactivated the lava lake at the base of the crater. But as the level of the molten lake has risen, it has partially drowned the vents resulting in subdued fountaining. Also, the amount of sulfur dioxide emitted from the eruption has dropped from 85,000 tons per day to 12,000. In a USGS volcanic activity notice posted on Monday evening, scientists wrote that it is unclear how long the current eruption will continue. They note that Kilauea summit eruptions over the past 200 years have lasted from less than one day to more than a decade. USGS says this ongoing eruption is similar to the most recent Kilauea eruption, which was also confined to the summit crater and generated a lava lake. It lasted approximately five months from December 2020 to May 2021. Scientists say they will continue to monitor Kilauea volcano closely and issue additional messages as warranted by changing activity. The eruption of Kilauea Volcano continues at the summit caldera, and while the alert level was downgraded on Monday evening from warning to watch, lava is still erupting from multiple vents and filling the lava lake below in the crater. Today, USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory released some new video showing the active lava fissures. Scientists say the west vent continues to be the most vigorous source with occasional bursts up to 20 meters or 66 feet. The lava lake has risen to the base of the west vent where a spatter rampart is being built. Over the past 24 hours, the lava lake level has risen approximately 1 meter or 3 feet. Seismicity and volcanic gas emission rates are still elevated. Sulfur dioxide readings remain high with preliminary measurements on October 4th of approximately 7,000 to 9,000 tons per day. Summit instruments continue to record deflationary tilt. The USGS published this reference map on October 5th. It shows the location of the two eruptive vents that were active at the time the map was made. It also shows the position of several islands on the lava lake surface that were present during the previous five-month eruption. Some of these islands were initially drowned by lava but later floated back to the top. The surface of the lava lake is now at approximately 2,530 feet, or 771 meters above sea level. Active lava is now visible from two public visitor overlooks in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. All lava activity remains confined to the summit within the national park, and no unusual activity has been observed in the East Rift Zone. 